Hello. Chains or collars made of precious metal have been worn as a sign of status and rank from classical times. They became popular in 14th century England as livery collars, sometimes worn fixed to a leather band, and were elite items of significant monetary value, but above all a very visible badge of office, or of family allegiance, or of the wearer's close attachment, for example to a ruler or royal house. By the 15th century they were largely restricted to being a royal gift and were prestigious items, a big step up from simply wearing a badge. For the recipient, the collar was an honour. In giving the collar, the king was both recognising loyalty and advertising his authority over an important subject. In the Wilton diptych, Richard II's portable altarpiece, Richard wears a collar of broom pods or plantagenista, referencing the Plantagenet dynasty, with his personal device, a white heart, as a pendant, a powerful symbol of royal authority and right to rule. Adherents of the House of Lancaster typically wore a collar made up of scrolled and linked S's. The precise meaning of the letter S as a symbol has proved elusive. Henry VII reintroduced this particular collar design at his coronation in 1485 with either a portcullis, the device of his mother Margaret Beaufort's family, or a Tudor rose. Collars were issued to senior courtiers and ministers and so became associated with the authority of high office. In his portrait, Edward Grimston, a senior diplomat in the service of Henry VI, is shown pointedly fingering his Lancastrian collar of S's. Sir Thomas More, as Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster and Speaker of the House of Commons, chose to have his portrait, painted by court artist Hans Holbein the Younger in 1527, wearing his collar of S's. More than 300 surviving memorial monuments and stained glass windows show their subject wearing a livery collar, a clear sign of the value those memorialised attached to its award and how they wanted to be remembered. On his alabaster memorial in St Mary in St Barlock Church at Norbury in Derbyshire, Ray Fitzherbert, who died in 1483, two years before the Battle of Bosworth Field, is shown proudly sporting a Yorkist collar of alternate suns and white roses, with, just out of view in this image, a white boar pendant, personal device of Richard III a celebration of his allegiance to the Royal House of York and by association his social status. The chain no doubt would originally have been gilded. Sometimes the roses and suns were combined in a design known as Rose en Soleil or the Sun in Splendour. According to legend, the Sun in Splendour was adopted by Edward IV after his victory at the Battle of Mortimer's Cross in 1461 when a meteorological phenomenon created the effect of making it look as though there were three suns, which was interpreted as an auspicious sign. A stained glass window of around 1462 in the Church of St Peter and St Paul at East Halling in Norfolk depicts Sir William Chamberlain, soldier and knight of the garter, wearing the new Yorkist livery collar of suns and roses. Earlier Yorkist collars had featured fetterlocks, a kind of shackle, with falcons. Yorkist collars soon disappeared after the accession of Henry VII, swiftly replaced by the reintroduced S's of Lancaster. On the choir screen at York Minster, showing the kings of England from William the Conqueror to Henry VI, the kings are shown crowned and variously with orb and scepter or sword symbolising their authority. Henry IV wears his collar of S's, as do Henry V and VI. It was the practice of European rulers to award collars signifying membership of an order of knighthood. Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy, founded the Order of the Golden Fleece in 1430 with a collar and titular pendant. To match his continental rivals, 
Henry VIII introduced a collar for the Knights of the Garter, which members of the order continue to wear with their ceremonial robes today. The Lord Mayor of London adopted a collar as a sign of civic authority. This stained glass window in the Mansion House shows Henry Fitz Aylwin, London's first Lord Mayor, appointed around 1189. A later chain references the collar of S's. The tradition continued into modern times. Most municipal mayors wear a chain as a symbol of office. This is the Mayor of Derby in 2015. And this is the Lord Mayor of Birmingham, pictured in ceremonial finery in 2016. A mayoral chain was presented to the town of Burton-on-Trent, dubbed the brewing capital of the world, by its first mayor, Brewer William Worthington, in 1879. As well as referencing his family arms, there are eagles, representing the arms of the Lord of the Manor, the Marquis of Anglesey, and the fleur-de-lis of the Bass family, the town's pre-eminent brewers. Typically, a chain is also worn by the mayor's consort. A pioneering aviation show, held in 1910 at Burton-on-Trent, provided the funds for an 18-carat gold chain for the then mayoress, Mary Jenkins, whose initials are included in the design, along with an enamel pendant of an aeroplane and the town's coat of arms. A chain for the deputy mayor was presented by the local Freemasons Lodge in 1955. Many of the emblems of medieval authority are now embedded in the rich pageantry and traditions that celebrate our history. Castles are no longer a threatening presence, but heritage assets and tourist attractions, and medieval symbols of power have evolved into elements that add colour to ceremonial occasions. And that brings us to the end of another series. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.